Okay, so as I said, I, I just want to start you off with a, with a, a more typical case study. This is the story of John. It's not his real name, but he's a 45-year-old disabled man who lives alone. He was born with cerebral palsy. As a result, he has difficulty with walking and has to use a walking stick for support. Although he walks with an obvious limp <coughs> and stumbles frequently, his independence is very important to him. So he tries to get out as much as possible. One afternoon, at approximately three o'clock, he was on his way to the local post office, which is about 10 minutes walk from where he lives. He became aware of a group of youths, probably about five in number, that he knows, that he saw sort of milling around. He's seen these youths before, and in fact he knows them by reputation as being a bit rowdy, a bit of a nuisance, and in fact, they shouted things at him in the past. On this occasion, one of the group blocked his path and started to stare at him, while another member of the group started to abuse him about the way he walked and started to mimic his movements by throwing his arms and legs around in exaggerated movement. While this was happening, the other members of the group were laughing hysterically. John felt insulted, disgusted, and humiliated. The incident continued until um, a customer in one of the nearby shops intervened and told the youth to leave John alone. The matter was reported to the police and they were arrested. However, since that incident took place, John's been unable to leave the flat on his own in the afternoons because he feels afraid that it might happen again. Now he has to wait until his sister accompanies him. But she lives 10 miles away, and she's got three kids, so he doesn't like to trouble her that often. Alternatively, he can go to the shops when his social worker's around. But what it means is, most of the time, John now sits at home Alone. Now, that's the kind of incident that you might at one point be dismissed as bullying, lads being a bit rowdy, um, or antisocial behaviour. But it's that type of behaviour that ruins lives. And it's because of that that we don't look at it as bullying, but as a criminal offence. And I just want to play you, I don't know how this works, a short video from the mouths of people that are affected by this to let you hear in their words. Yeah. This other guy came up and poured a, 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 a load of brandy over or something, and uh, Claire claimed that he was doing it to put the fire out. And, which is obviously a lot of rubbish, isn't it? Well, I first moved in, about in the lumber, I was burgled. And there was a very massively disturbed um, burglary. They did a lot of damage. There was a time, has one of my carers, who I employed, who showed me carers, who who said, who one took my credit card, she looked over, over my shoulder, and she was a friend to me. She took a lot of money out of my account. The school kid put me, school kid put, school kid put me that way, no, stop at that, no, stop on, but no, stop on, eyes, so my girl, eyes, eyes came out. The school kid pushed me over, I come, I come out of him. The school kid come, the school kid's coming after names. I swear at me. I, I walk home from the centre I go to, and there's kids, and they say, they say stuff. They say horrible stuff, like spasm and that, spastic, and she's, she's 
depressed, bullied from work, from, through school, left school, went to uni, bullied there, got a job. A, a work colleague's bullied her because she got a learning problem. I am actually dyslexic and before I'm sick. Mm -hmm. I'm actually pretty drunk. I, I, I'm actually now a trainer for the I'm an air aircraft disability aircraft. So when I see I'm just a I don't know what I'm doing, but I just see it. Sometime in the summer, I'm getting off November, I was out in here in Castle, ringing my doorbell, knocking on my door. So I went up to the police and I just say, um, can you look outside the window? I said, no, I'm too scared. Can you just look outside the window and get a bit of food? How do I feel? Uh, I was angry because it's just absolutely disgraceful. It's, it's just very, very upsetting. Uh, very ups upsetting. It was only for myself. But he's a family. And he made me very scared and vulnerable. Very upset. Angry and unsafe. Sometimes I'm angry at some angry but that upset and I'm bad and the bad tempered. I don't think they understand. No, no. My point of view is if I hurt people, even if they're just picking on them, it can mean life and death. They don't look to the hand. I'm just conscious of the time, but you, you, you've heard from each of the people that incidents which have themselves seen, you know, the calling of the names, one the gentleman saying, you know, the police, they'd look outside and see who's doing it, and he said, I'm afraid to look outside. So, as we talked, the session's about changing attitudes. And I've started to touch on this morning. A lot of the attitudes that we see that escalate into some of the more serious offending starts at school, starts with attitudes of bullying, which aren't checked, which then escalate on. And the disabled person often gets told, well, that's just the way of the world, just get over it. But as the behavior escalates, they still think that there's no, there's no point in me complaining. So what we've done within the CPS is the changes of the heart there. We started to focus a lot on not just what we can do around trying to change people's attitudes. And we developed a school pack for age um, 13 to 14, which is a 13 and sort of 14 year old, which explains about disability hate crime and the impact that it has on people. And this clip that you've seen here is actually a part of a training pack that we've put together for, um, for the police around the types of things that might get reported to them that they might dismiss as if they see it as a one-off, but actually it's indicative of behaviours which could escalate into something far worse. So I don't want to, I mean, I've already, you know, I'm going to give you the, the speech from this morning, but I mean, these, this is the, 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 the kind of work that we're doing. Um, the offence is, as I said, you know, people dis dismiss it as bullying, but in fact, you know, the constant harassment of someone is a criminal offence. You know, the name calling of individuals, if you're going to call, if it causes them harassment or distress, it is an offence. It's not bullying.